So before I started working on the repeater, I thought about delays. A really popular delay is using a capacitor and a transistor. When power is sent to this capacitor, the capacitor gets charged. The charge is able to go through this 300 ohm resistor attached to the base of the transistor. The current powers the transistor and allows current to flow through it. Power going through this 300 ohm resistor through the LED attached to the collector pin of the transistor and it comes out the, the emitter pin which is attached to ground. Once disattaching the power from the capacitor, the capacitor will still hold the charge but will slowly drain out through this resistor and to the base of the transistor. You can see if I apply power again, the capacitor gets recharged and allows for more current to flow through. Once the capacitor is discharged, right here I'll demonstrate by touching it to ground then the LED will turn off. The problem with this design is you need different capacitors and resistors in order to get the timing just right. A simple solution would be to use a 555 timer, but that I see also requires external resistors and capacitors. In addition, you need some logic ICs or logic gate. Ultimately, to keep the build simple, I use the ATtiny85. It has an internal clock to handle all the delays, as well as the digital logic to run the locking and unlocking of the repeater. Not to mention, it also cuts down on the soldering. So here's the module that I'm using. It has the ATtiny85 right here, and also these two headers here that connect onto the headers of the body. Here's the circuit I'm using. So starting with VCC or positive, we have it connected straight to three to five volts positive and then connected over here to the middle header. This is connected to the potentiometer and the repeater itself. Below VCC is A1. This is also referred to as pin two of the AT Tiny 85. We're using the analog function connected straight to the other end of the repeater potentiometer. Finally, on the right side, we have pin zero as out and it's just connected straight on down to the LED header here. And down from that, we have a shock key diode. From the shock key diode, it goes out through the wire here into a header, into the header of the body. Any of these open-ended wires signify that it's a extension wire that connects onto a different header. The Shockey diode is used so that if a signal comes backwards, it won't affect the LEDs in the repeater. So now on the left side from the top, we have pin three. We're using digital pin three, or you can also use analog pin three. It goes all the way around connected to the 1K resistor and behind the 1K resistor, we have a lock positive. If this line gets power here, then it will lock the repeater in the code. And after, we just have it connect straight to ground. The same thing happens for pin number four. You could also use analog two. Over here, we have the same thing going on where it's going out to the in positive. On the ground end, we have a in negative wire and a lock negative wire. These are wires that connect onto the body. Here's the alignment. So from the AT tiny headers, you go two up, and then put the next two header. Then you go three up, and then you put the final headers. To solder these, you can just tilt it while holding the back. Make sure it's flat before soldering. When connecting certain points on the boards, I either use some cuttings off of the resistors. Sometimes I'll also strip this 22 solid gauge wire. I'll use unstripped wires like this one. If on the other side it overlaps with another wire, just so it doesn't short. Here's the cleanest way I fit the resistors in. These are 2K ohm resistors. And so you can see the leads go to each pin independently and then connect together down to ground. Now using this lead that was previously cut from a resistor. So I bent one end to start with. I'm gonna solder that on. This is positive five volts going to the header. Now that I have it bent, I can connect it with solder. Right here, I'm going to start off with the red wire. Solder it on to the header. Once it's soldered, I'm going to align the black wire with the header and solder that one on. 
Once you've connected all the headers, you're done soldering. Fitting the modules inside the bases can be pretty tough, so I recommend leaving these wires really long. Also, I recommend making these boards very slim so you can fit your fingers in between. You can also move the board this way, connect everything up, and then bend it back straight up. The circuit does not have reverse protection. This means that when you're connecting that the red wire meets with the red wire on this side and the black with the black on this side. If you have them reversed, then the AT Tiny will heat up and may possibly burn out. For putting the AT Tiny, make sure that the indicator dot goes facing up. So here's the code. I was able to compress everything down. It can still be improved a little bit better. This is an earlier version and you can see it's a little bit more complicated. So here in my latest revised version, I was able to condense the checks within the if statements here, reducing the total length of the code. It's split into four main conditions consisting of if and while statements. The two if statements have the delays embedded inside. The two while statements are used to keep it in a loop if it's being locked or if it's being powered. These are the variables I chose. The out pin connected to pin 0 will power the LEDs. The variable side checks pin 3 and if it's being locked. Pin 4 is on pin 4 checking whether it's receiving power to turn the repeater on. The variable signal is set on pin 2 called A1 as analog pin 1. It'll be reading the divided voltage from the repeater potentiometer. Finally, this last variable is called del for delay. This variable will be connected to the signal as memory. In the setup, we have out as output, side and in as both inputs. Finally, we have digital write out low, just to make sure that the LEDs within the repeater are initially off. To start with, we first read the potentiometer. After is the first if statement. This if statement is responsible for turning off the repeater. This is saying that if the repeater is not powered and if the LEDs are on and also if the repeater is not being locked from the side, it'll go through a delay depending on what the delay is set as. The voltage divider in the repeater has a ratio of 1 to 3, which means that after each resistor, the signal will be reduced by a third of the initial signal. There are four total delays it can be. The first delay is set at one tick attached to ground. The second one is two ticks attached after two resistors. The third one is three ticks, which is attached after the first resistor. And finally is four ticks attached straight to the input voltage on signal. Finally, I'll go through this last if statement. If the repeater is not being powered and also is not being locked, then it will turn off the LEDs. After that if statement, we have a while statement. This statement is just to catch it in a loop. So within this loop, while the repeater is being powered, or if it gets powered from the side and locking it, all while the LEDs are already lit, then it will continuously just read the delay signal. This statement is useful since it will continuously read all these variables. And so once the repeater is not being powered, or it's no longer being locked, it will be able to escape this while loop. The next while statement is used if the repeater gets locked in the off state. While in this locked off state, the microcontroller will do nothing but check the side variable here as well as the signal variable. Once it's not being powered from the side, then it's able to go through this final if statement. This last if statement is responsible for turning on the repeater. It's saying that if the LEDs are off and it's receiving power, but also if it's not being locked from the side, it'll go through the delay depending on the signal. So we have one tick, two tick, three tick, and four tick. And after that delay, if it doesn't get locked before, it'll turn on the LEDs. If it does get powered from the side and gets locked, before these delays are over, it won't turn on the LEDs and it will get caught within this while statement after the AT Tiny updates. One thing to take note of is that these are different delay values. No matter where I put the statement, the microcontroller would be too quick. And when I was trying to loop both the repeaters, it would just get caught in the on position. In order to avoid that, I made the delay for turning off shorter. I'll be including all this code within the 3D models themselves, so you can just add them straight into your Arduino files. And this circuit I built here, it has power source in this block here. You can see, pushing the button turns on the LED. 
but will also supply power. And this other signal block, it's using a coin cell battery, three volts. When the lever is flipped here, it will send voltage out this way into the microcontroller in this repeater here. This repeater is sending a signal to this repeater, locking it since it's coming from the side. If this signal beats the signal before this repeater turns off, it'll keep the repeater on. And if this repeater is off and it has a signal coming in this way, it'll keep this repeater off. So that's pretty much everything. If you have any questions, please let me know and thank you for watching.